Hi friends, continuing to the tab chapter Wings of the Fire and Autobiography of APJ Abdul Kalam. Through the windows of the compartment, he watched the countryside split past. From a distance, the men in the fields in their white dhotis and turbans and the women folks in the bright splashes of the colors against the green backyard of paddy fields seems to inhabit some beautiful paintings. He salt glued to the window. Almost everywhere people were engaged in some activity which had a rhythm and transcutely about it. Men driving a cattle, women fetching a water from the stream, occasionally a child would appear a wave at the train. It is astonished how the landscape changes as one moves northwards. The rich and the fertile plains of the river Ganges and its numerous tributaries have invited invasions, turmoil and changes. Around 1500 BC, fair-skinned Aryans swept in through the mountain passes from the far northwest. The 10th century brought Muslims who later mingled with the local people and became an integral part of this country. One empire gave way to the another. Religious consequent continued. All this time, the part of the India south of the Tropic of the Cancer remained largely untouched, safe behind the shield of a Vidyalaya and Saptagara mountain ranges. The Namada, Tapati, Mahanadi, Godavari and Krishna rivers had own a net of almost unassailable protections for the tapering Indian peninsula. To bring me to Delhi, his train had crossed all the geographical impediments through the power of a scientist advancement. He halted for a week in a Delhi, the city of the great Sufi Said Hazard Nizamuddin and appeared for the interview of D, T, D and P, R. He did well at the interview. The question were of a routine nature and did not challenge his knowledge of the subject. Then he proceeded to Daradam for his interview at the Air Force Selection Board. At the Selection Board, the empathizers was more on personality than on intelligence. Perhaps they were looking for a physical fitness and article manner. It was excited but nervous, determined by the anxious, confident but tensed. It could only finish ninth in the batch of 25 examined to select 8 officers for commissioning in the Air Force. He was deeply disappointed. It took him so many times to compare that the opportunity to join the Air Force has slipped through his fingers. He dragged himself out of a selection board and stood at the edge of a cliff. There was a lake far below. He knew that, days, that these days ahead would be difficult. There was question to be answered and a plan of action to be prepared. He trekked down to Rishikesh. He bathed in the Ganges and revelled in the purity of its water. Then he walked to the Shivanada ashram situated a little way up the hill. He could feel intent vibration when he entered. He saw a large number of sadhus seated all around in a state of terrence. He had read the sadhus, very physic people, people who think intellectually and in his dedicated mood. He sought answers to the doubt that troubled him. He met Swami Shivananda, a man who looks like Buddha, wearing a snow-white dhoti and wooden slipper. He had an olive complexion and a black pricking eyes. He was struck by his irrespectable, almost childlike smile and gracious manner. He introduced himself to the Swamiji. My Muslim name arouses no reaction in him. Before he could speak, any further, he inquired about the so of his sorrow. He offered no explanation of how he knew the sad was he did not ask.
he told him about his successful unsuccessful attempt to join the air force and his long cherished desire to fly he smiled seeing away all his anxiety almost instantly then he said i feeble but very deep voice desire when it stems from the heart and spirit when it is pure and instant possesses oneness of some electromagnetic energy this energy is related into either each night as the mind falls in the sleep state each morning it return to the consciousness state reinforced with the cosmic current that which has been reinforced with the cosmic current that which has been imaged with surely and certainly manifested you can relay young man upon this ageless promises as surely as you can relay upon the extremely unbreakable promises of sunrise and of the spring when the student is ready the teacher will appear how try here was a teacher to show the way to a student who had gone astray accept your destiny and go ahead with your life you are not destinated to become a air force pilot what you are destinated to become is not revealed now but it is predictable forgot this failure as it was essential to lead you to your destined path search in street for the true purpose of your existence becomes one with yourself my son surrendered yourself to the with of god swami ji said he returned to delhi and inquired at the dttp and pr about his outcome of his interview in response he was handed an appointment letter he joined the next day as a senior scientific assistant as a basic salary of 2250 per month if this was not to be his destination he thought let it be so finally he was filled with a mental peace the more did he feel any bitterness or resentments at the failure to enter the air force all this was in 1958 at the directorate he was posted as a technical center that is in central aviation if it was not a flying aeroplane it was at least helping that makes air worthy during his first years in directorate carried out a design assignment on a supersonic target aircraft with the help of officers in charge dr vardarajan and own a word of a praise from the directorate dr neelagandan to gain shop floor explosives to aircraft maintenance he was sent to the aircraft and aramant testing unit that is a and i atu at kanpur at the time they were involved in a tropical evaluation of gant mh1 aircraft he participated in the performance assessment of its operation system even in those days kanpur was a very populous city it was his first experience of living in an industrial town the cold weather the crowd the noise and the smoke were in total contrast to that what he used to do in rameshwaram he was particularly troubled by the abequentance presence of a potatoes on the dining table right from the breakfast to the dinner to him it seems that a feeling of loneliness pervading the city the people on the streets had all come from the villages in the search of uh, jobs in the factories leaving behind the smells of their soil and the protection of their families on his return to delhi he was informed that the design of dat target has been taken up by dtp and ap air and that has been included in the design team he undertook a preliminary design study of human certifi- certifuge it later carried out the design and developed of vertical takeoff and landing platform he was also associated with the development of a construction of the hot cockpit 3 years passed then the aeronautical 
Development Establishment that is ADE was born in Bangalore and was posted to new establishment. Bangalore as a city contrast to the Kanpur in fact he feel our country has an uncanny way of bringing out the extremes in the people. He supposes that it is because Indians have been both afflicted and enriched by the centuries of migrations. Loyalty to the differently rulers has dulled her, our capacity for a single alliances. Instead, we have to develop an extraordinary ability to compensate and have developed an extraordinary ability to cruel, sensitive and cautious, deep and fictional. All at the same time, to the un- trained eyes, we may appear colorful and picture skews to the critical eyes. We are but shoody imitations of various masters. In Kanpur, he saw pans, chewings, imitations of Wajid Ali Shah and in Bangalore, it was replaced by a dog walking shahibs. Here too, he longed for the deep and the calmness of the Rameshwaram. The relationship between the heart and the head of the earthy Indians has been eroded by the divided sensibilities of his cities. He spent many evenings exploring the gardening and shopping plazas of the Bangalore. The workload at ADE during the first year of its inspection was quite light. In fact, he had to generate work for himself at the first until the tempo gradually built up. Based on his pre preliminary studies, the tempo gradually built up. The studies on the ground handling equipments, a project team was formed to design and develop a indigenous handover craft prototype as a ground equipment machine that is GEM. The team was small working group compromising four person at the level of scientific assistance. Dr. O.P. Mediteria, the director of the ADE, asked him to lead the team. We were given three years to launch the engineering model. The project was by any standard bigger than our collective capabilities. None of us had an experience in building a mission let alone a flying mission. There was no designs or standard components available to begin with. All we knew was that we had to make a successful heavier than air flying mission. We tried to read as much as literatures as we could find on hovercraft but there was not much available. We tried to consult people's knowledge able in this area but couldn't find none. One day he simply took the decision to proceed with the limited information and resources available. This endeavor to produce a wingless light shift mission opened the window of his mind. He was quick to see at least a metrophonical connection between a hovercraft and an aircraft. After all the Wright brothers made the first aeroplane after fixing the bicycle for several years. He saw in the gem products great opportunities for ingenuity and growth. He went straight into hardware's development after spending a few months on the drawing board. There is always a danger that a person with a kind of backgrounds, rulers or small town mid class whose parents has limited education will retreat into a corner and remain there struggling for bare existence. Unless some great turns of circumstances propels him into a more favorable environment. He knew how to create his own opportunities. Part by part, subsystems by subsystems, stage by stage, things started moving. Working on this project, he learned that once your mind stretches to a new level, it never go back to its original dimension. 
At that time, V. K. Krishna Krishna Menon was the defense minister. He was newly interested in the progress of his small projects, which has innovated as a beginning of the indigenous development of Indian defense equipment. Whenever he was in a Bangalore, he always founded sometimes to review the progress of his projects. His confidence in his ability indicated his enthusiasm. He would enter the assembly shop, leaving his other problem outside, just as a father used to enter the mosque for the prayers, leaving his shoes outside. But not everyone accepts Krishna Menon's option about the gym. His experiments with the valuable parts and the components did not exactly delight his senior colleagues. Many even called as a group of eccentric inventors in the process of an impossible dream. He began the leader of the neighbors, was a particularly inviting target. It was regarded as a yet another country bumpkin who believed that riding the air was his demand. The comments of some of the senior assistants at ADE made me recall John Trowbridge's famous Saturation's poem on the Wright Brothers published in 1896. With thrimble and the thread and wax on the hammer and buckles and the screws and all such things as genius use. Two bats for the patterns, curious fellow, a charcoal pot and a pair of bellows. When the project was about a year old, Defense Minister Krishna Menon made one of his routine visits to ADE. He exhorted him into his own assembly shop. Inside, on a table lay the gem model broken down into sub-assemblies. The model represented the accumulation of one year's uterine efforts to develop a particular hovercraft for battlefield applications. The minister fired one question after the other at him, determined to ensure that the prototype would go into test flight within the coming year. He told Mr. Diditra, gem flight is possible with the gadgets Kalam now possesses. The overhead craft was criticized Nandi after the bull ridden by the Lord Shiva. For a prototype, its form, fit and finish was beyond our expectation, given the rudimentary infrastructure we possessed. He told to his colleagues, here is a flying machine not constructed by a bunch of crunch but by engineers of ability. Don't look at it. It is not made to look at it, but to fly with. Defense Minister Mr. Krishna Menon flew in the Nandi, overruling the accompanying officials concerned for his safety. A group captain in the Minister Rupin, who had locked in many thousands flying hours, even offered to, offered to fly the mission to save the minister from the potential danger of flying with an inexperienced civilian pilot like himself and gestured to him to come out of the mission. It was sure about his competence in flying the mission that he made and therefore shook his head in ne negation. Observing this wordless communication, Krishna Menon dismissed the insulting suggestions of the group captain with a laugh and signaled to him to start the mission. He was very happy. You have demonstrated that the basic problem of the hovercraft development are solved. Go for more power prime mover and call me for a second ride. Krishna Menon told him that the Spectacle group captain that is now Air Michel Golly later becomes a good friend of him. He completed the project ahead of a schedule. He, he had a working ho hovercraft with his 
moving on an air cushions of about 40 mm with a load of 550 kilo, kilograms including the tar weight dr meditra was visibly pleased with the achievement by this time krishna menon was out of the office and could not take his promised second ride in the new order not many people share his dream with the regards to the military applications of an indigenous hovercraft in fact even today we import hovercrafts the project was mired in the controversies and was finally shelved it was a new experience for him so far he has believed that the sky was the limit but not appear that the limit were much closer there are boundaries that dignates life you can only lift so much weight you can only learn so fast you can only work so hard you can only go so far it was unwillingly to face reality i had put my heart and soul into nandi that it would not be used was something beyond my comprehension he was disappointed and disisolated in this period of confusion and uncertainty memories from his childhood come back to him and he discovered new meaning in them Pakshi Sastri used to say, Seek the truth and the truth shall set you free. As the Bible says, Ask you, you shall receive. It does not happen immediately, but it happened nevertheless. One day, Dr. Meditra called him. He inquired about the state of his, however, craft, when told that it was in perfect conditions to be flown. He asked him, to organize a demonstration for an important visitor than the next day. No VIP was scheduled to visit the laboratory during the next day, as far as he knew. However, he communicated Dr. Meditra instructions to his colleagues and he felt a few search of the hope. The new day, the next day, Dr. Meditra brought a visitor to his hovercraft, a tall, handsome bearded man he asked him uh, several questions about the mission he was struck by the objective and the clarity of his thinking can you give me a ride in this mission he inquired his request filled him with a joy finally he was someone who interested in his work we took a 10 minutes ride in the hovercraft a few centuries above the ground we are not flying but we are definitely floating in the air. The visitors asked him for a few more questions about himself, thanked me for the ride and departed. But not before introducing himself, he was Professor M. G. K. Menem, the director of the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, that is TIFR. After a week, he received a call from an Indian committee for a space research to attend an interview for the post of rocket engineer. All he knew about in Cosper at the time was it was formed out of a deferred talent pool of Bombay, now as Mumbai, to organize a space research in India. He went to Bombay to attend the interview. He was unsure about the type of the questions he would have to face at the interview. There was hardly any time to read up or talk to an any inexperienced person. Lakshmana Sastri voice questioned from the Bhagavad Gita echoed in his ears. All being are born to delusion, overcome by the diluities which arise from wish and hate, but those men of victorious deed in whom sins have come to an end. Freed from the delusions of diluities, Worship being steadfast in their woes. He remembered himself that the best way to win was not to need to win. The best performance are accomplished when you are relaxed and free of doubt. He decided to take things as they came. Since neither Professor M.G.K. Menon visit nor the call for an interview 
has been of making I, he decided this was the best attitude to take he was interviewed by dr vikram sarabai along with professor mgk menon and mr sharaf then the deputy secretary of the atomic energy commissions as he entered the room he was sensed their warmth and friend illness it was almost immediately struck by dr sara bai's warmth there was none of arrogance or the patronizing attitudes which interviews usually dispute display when taking to when talking to a anger on a vulnerable candidate dr sara bai question did not probe his exist knowledge or skills rather they were an exploration of the possibilities he was filled with he was looking at him as if in the reference to a larger whole the entire encounter seems to be a total moment of the truth in which his dream was enveloped by the larger dream of a bigger person it was advised to stay back for a couple of days however the next evening he was told about his selection it was to be absorbed as a rocket engineers at in cos par this was a breakthrough a young man like himself dreamed of a work at in sos par committed with a familiarization course at tifr computer center the atmosphere here was remarkably different from the ttdp air labels mattered very little there was no need for anyone to justify his position or to be able to receiving in to the other hostility sometime in the latter half of 1962 in cosper took the decision to set up the equatorial rocket launching station at tumba a sleeping fishing village near trivandrum now trivandrum in kerala dr chitins of a physical research laboratory ahmedabad had spotted it as a suitable location as it was very close to the earth magnetic equator this was the quiet beginning of the modern rocket based research in india the site selected by the tumba lay between the railway line and the sea coast covering a distance of about 2 and 1/2 kilometers and measuring about 600 acres within this area stood a large church whose site has to be acquired land acquisition from the private parties is always a different and time consuming progress especially in demensely polluted place in kerala in addition there was the delicate matters of acquiring a site of religious significance the collector of a trivandrum then k madavan nayam executed this task is a most tactful peaceful and expenditure manner with the blessing and the cooperation of right reverend dr riera who was a bishop of trivandrum in 1962 soon rd john and the executive engineers of the central public work department cpwd has transformed the entire area the st mary magdalene church housed the first office at tumba space center the prayer room was his first laboratory the bishop room was his first design and drawing office to this day the church is maintain its full glory and at the present houses indian space museum very soon after this he was asked to proceed to america for a 6 month training program on sounding rocket launching techniques at the national aeronautics and space work center that is nasa he took some times off before going abroad and went to rameshwaram his father was very pleased to learn about the opportunity that he came in his way he took him to the mosque and organized a special namaz in thanksgiving he could feel the power of the god flowing in a circuit through his father to him back to the god 
we all were under the spell of the prayers. One of the important function of the prayers we believe is to act as a stimulus to creative ideas within the mind or all the resources required for a successful living. Ideas are present in a consciousness which when released and given scope to the grow and take shapes can lead to a successful event. God our creator had stored within the minds and personalities great potential strength and abilities. Prayer help us to tap and develop these power. Ahmad Jamdullah and Samsudin came to see him off at Bombay airport. It was their first exposure to a big city like Bombay. Just as himself was about to have his first exposure to a mega city like New York. Jalaluddin and Samsudin were self-reliant, positive, optimistic men who undertook their work with the assurance of the success. It is from those two persons that he drew the core creative power of a mind. His sentiments could not be contained and he could feel the midst of a tears in his eyes. Then Jalaluddin said, Azad, we had always loved you and we believed in you. We shall always proud of you. The intensity of the purity of the faith in his capability broke his last defendants and tears welled when up in his eyes. He started his work at NASA at the Lancy Research Center LRC in Hampton, Virginia. This is primary an R&D center for the advanced aerospace technology. One of the most vivid memories of LRC is of a piece of sculptures despite a characters driving two horses one representing the scientific research and the other technological development metaphormalistic in capitalistic the interconnection between research and development from lrc he went to gadget space flight center that is gsfc at greenmelt maryland this center developed and managed most of the NASA Earth obtaining science and application satellites. It operates at NASA a Earth orbiting science and applying statistics. It operates NASA tracking networks for all the space missions. Towards the end of his visit, he went to Valopes flight facility at Valopes Island in the east coast of Virginia. This place was the base of a NASA's sounding rocket program. Here he saw a painting prominently displayed in the reception lobby. It despite a battle seen with a few rocket flying in the background. A painting with his theme should be the most commonplace things at the flight facility but the painting caught his eyes because the soldiers on the side launching the rockets was not white but dark skinned with the racial features of the people found in the south asia one day his curiosity got better of him drawing him towards the painting it it turned to be a Tipu Sultan's army flighting and the British. The painting debated of the fats forgotten in Tipu Sultan's own country but commemorated here on the other side of the planet. He was happy to see an Indian glorified by the NASA as a hero of a warfare rocky factory. His impressions of the American people can be summarized by a quotation from Benjamin Franklin. Those things that hurts instruct, he realized that people in this part of the world meet their problems head on. They attempt to get out of them rather than suffer them.
the mother his mother had once narrated an incident from the holy book after god created man he asked the angels to prostrate themselves before adam everybody prostrated themselves except ibels or satans who refused why did you not prostrate yourself allah asked you created me of a fire and him of a clay does not make me honorable than adam's satan contented god said be gone from the paradise this is not a place for your constantipus pride satan obeyed but not before cursing adam with the same facts some soon adam followed the suit by becoming a transgender after eating the forbidden fruit allah said go hence and you may your decent life a life of doubts and mistrust what makes life in indian organization difficult in the world spreading privilege of this very continuous pride it stopped us from listening of our juniors subordinates and the people down the line you cannot expect a person to deliver a result in you humanize him nor you can accept him to create if you abuse him or despite him the line between the firmness and the harshness between strong leadership and bullying between discipline and vigilance is very fine but it has to be drawn unfortunately the only line promotively drawn in our country today is between the horse and the zero no one side of few hundred heroes keeping 950 million people down on the other side this situation has to be changed as a process of confronting and solving problems often requires hard works and is painful we had endless actually problem can be cutting edges that actually distinguish between the success and the failure they draw out innate courage and wisdom as soon as he written from nasa india's first rocket launching took place on 21st november in 1963 it was a sounding rocket called nike ak made at nasa the rocket was assembled in the church building it, it has been referred to the earlier the only equipment available to transport the rocket was a truck and a manual operated hydrochloric crane the assembled rocket was to be shifted from the church building to launch pad by the truck when the rocket was lifted by the crane and was about to be placed on the launcher it started tilting indicates a leak in the hydrochloric system of the crane as we were fast approaching the launch time by 6 pm any repairs to the crane can be ruined out fortunately the leak was no larger and we managed to lift the rock manually using our collective muscle powers and final placing it on the launcher in the maiden nike apache launch uh, he was in charge of a rock ingratiation and the safety two of his colleagues who played very active and a crucial role in the in his launch were e ishwar das at r and r arva mudans ishwar das undertook the rocket assembly at the arranges the launches aravind mohan who we called as dan was charge of radar telemetry and ground support the launch was smooth and problem free we obtained excellent flight data of returning with a sense of pride and accomplishment when we are relaxing the next evening at the dinner table we received a news of the assassination of the president john k f kennedy in dallas texas we are appalled the kennedy years was significant era in america 
when young when were at home affairs he used to read with the interest about the kennedy moves in the missile crisis of late in 1962 the soviet union built missile sites in cuba from which it could have been possible to launch attack on american cities kennedy imposed a black code or a quarantine barring the interdictions of any offensive missiles to cuba america also threatened to respond to any soviet nuclear attack from the cuba on any other countries in the western hemisphere by relating against the ussr after 14 days of the intense drama the crisis was resolved by the soviet premium ordering that the cuban bases be dismantled and the missiles returned to russia the next day professor sarabai has a detailed discussion with us on the future plans he was creating a new frontier in the field of science and technologies in india a new generation scientist and an engineer in their 30s and earlier 40s was being charged with an unpredicting dimension our biggest qualification at INCOSPAR were not our degrees and trainings but professor sarabai's faith in our capabilities after the successful launch of a nike apache he chooses to share with us his dream of an indian satellite launch vehicle professor sarabai optimized was highly contagious the very news of his coming to tumba would electrify people and all laboratories workshops and design offices would hum with unceasing activity people would work virtually around the clock because of their enthusiasm to show professor sara bai some things new some things that had not been done before in our country b it is a new design or a new method of fabrication or even out of the way administration procedure professor sara bai would often assign multiple tasks to a single person or a group though some of those tasks would appear totally unrelated in the beginning they would at a larger stage embrace as deeply in contacted when professor sara bai was talking to us about the satellite launch vehicle slv he asked him almost in the same breath to take up the studies on a rocket assisted take off system that is ratio for military aircraft two things had no apparent connection experts in the mind of this great visionary i knew that all i he has to do was to remain alert and focus on his purpose and sooner or later an opportunity to do a challenging job would enter his laboratory professor sara bai was ever willing to try out novel approaches and like to drawing in young people he had the wisdom and judgment which enabled him to realize not only if something as well done but also when it was time to stop in his opinion he was an ideal experimental and innovator when there was an alternative courage of action before us whose outfit was difficult to predict or to reconcile wearing the prospectives professor sara bai would restore experimental to resolve that issues this was precisely that situation at inco spar in 1963 a bunch of inexperienced but netherless energetic and enthusiastic person were given the task of fleshing out the spirit of self reliance in the field of science and technology in general and the space research in particular was a great example of a leaders by trust the rocket launch site later blossomed in tumba equator rocket launch 
station that is TERLS. TERLS was established through active collaboration with the France, USA and USSR. The leader of the Indian space program, Professor Vikram Sarabhai, had com comprehended the full implementation of the challenges and had not backed off taking it on. Right from the day INCO SPAR was formed, he was aware of the need or to organize an integrated national space program with the equipped for the manufacturers of the rockets and launch facilities developed and produced in digestion lean. With this in a view, a wide ranging program for scientific or uh, technological development in a rocket fuel, population system, aeronautics, aerospace materials, advanced fabrications, techniques, rocket motors instrumentations, controls and guideline systems, telemetry, tracking systems and scientific instruments for the experimentation in the space were launched at the Space Science and Technology Center and at the Physics Research Laboratory at Ahmedabad. Incidentally, this laboratory has produced a large number of Indian space scientists of extremely high calibrate over the years. The real journey of the Indian aerospace program, however, has begun with a Rogini Soundary rocket that is RSR programming what is distinguishes a sounding rocket from a satellite launch vehicle that is SLV and a form a satellite mission. In fact, they are there are different kinds of the rockets. Sounding rockets are normally used for probing the near earth environment including the upper regions of the atmosphere. While they can carry a variety of a scientific pay loads to the range of altitudes they cannot impact the final velocity need to be altered by the payroll. On the other hand, a launch vehicle is designed to inject into orbit a technical payload or a satellite. The final stage of a launch vehicle provides the necessary velocity for a satellite to enter an orbit. This is a complex operation recurring on the board guiding and control system. A mission though belonging to the same family is still more complex system. In addition to the large terminal velocity on board guiding the control and it must have the capability to home onto the targets. When targets are fast moving and careable of managers and miscible is also required to carry out our target tasking functions. The RSR program was responsible for the development and the fabrications of the sounding rockets and their associates on the board systems for scientific investigations in India. Under this program, a family of operational sounds rockets were developed. These rockets had a wide-ranging capac capabilities and do date several hundreds of these rockets have been launched for various scientists and technological studies. I, he still remember that the first Rohini rocket consists of a single solid proportional motor weighted a mere of 32 kg. It lifted a nominal 7 kg uploaded to an altitude of about 10 kilometers. It was soon followed by the another to which one more solid proponential stage was added to dispatch multi-experimental payloads weighting nearly 100 kgs and altitude of over 350 kilometers. The development of these rockets has resulted in a fully integrated capacities in the production of sounding rockets as well as their proponents. This program has brought into the country technique for their production of a very high performances solid proponents like those based on a polyrhythmic and a polybrutane polymer 
it later resulted in setting up for a propellant fuel complex that is PC PFC to manufacture strategic chemical requires for the rocket engines and a rocket propagand plant that is RPP to produce a propellant. The development of the Indian rockets in the 12th century can be seen as a revival of the 18th century dream of Tipu Sultan. When Tipu Sultan was killed, the British captured more than 700 rockets and subsystems of 900 rockets in the battle of Turkan Hali in 1799. His army had 27 bridges called Kushons and each bright gauge has a company of rocketmen called Jogs. These rockets has been taken to the England by William Congreve and were subjected by the British to what we call reverse engineering today. There were of course no GATT, IPR Act or Pesh Patan Regime. With the death of, death of a Tipu Sultan, the Indian rocketry also met its demands at least for 150 years. Meanwhile, the rocket technology made great strides abroad. Constantin in Russia in 1903, Robert Goddard in USA in 1914, and Hermann's orbit in Germany in 1923 gave rocketry new dimension. In Nazi Germany, Werner Vion Bruns Group produced V2 short range ballistic missile and showered fire on the Allied forces. After the war, both the USA and USSR captured their shares of German rocket technology and the rocket engineers. With this booty, they started to run their deadly arms race with the missiles and warheads. Rocketry were reborn in India thanks to the technological vision of Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru. Professor Sarabhai took the challenge of giving physical dimension to this dream. A uh, very many individuals with my folic vision question the relevance of a space activities as newly independent nation which was finding it difficult to feed its population. But neither the Prime Minister Nehru nor the Professor Sarabhai has any ambitious of purpose. Their vision was very clear. If Indians were to play a meaningful role in the community of a nation, they just be second to none in the application of the advanced technology to the real life program. They had no interior of using it merely as a mean to display our might. During his frequent visit to Tumba, Professor Sarabhai would openly review the progress of the work with the entire team. He never gave directions, rather though a free exchange of views. He leads us to forward it into a new terrain with often revealed an unforeseen solution. Perhaps he was aware that though a particular goal might be clear to himself and he could give adequate direction for its accomplishment. His team members might have restricted working towards a goal that made no sense to them. He considered the coll collective understanding of the problems the main attributes of effective leadership. He once told me, look my job is to make a decision but it is equally important to see if that these decisions are accepted by team members. In fact, Professor Sarabhai took a series of a decision that were to become the life missions of many. We would make our own rockets, our own satellite launch vehicles that is SLVs and our own satellites and this would be not be done one by one but concurrently in a multi-dimensional fashion in the development of a payload for the sounding rockets instead of getting a certain payload and then engineering it to fit into the rocket 
we discuss the matter thread back with the payload scientists working in a different organization and at different locations. I may even say that the most significant achievements of the sounding rocket program was to establish and maintain national wide mutual trust. Perhaps realizing that I preferred to pursue a people to do as they were told rather than use my leg legislative made authority, Professor Sarah Bai assigned me the task of providing interfaces support to pay all scientists. Almost all physical laboratories in India were involved in sounding rocket programs, each having its own missiles, it is own objective and it is own play loads. These play loads were required to be integrated to the rocket structure so as to ensure their proper functioning and endurance under flight conditions. We had X-ray play loads to look at the stars, payloads flitting with the radio frequencies, mass spectrometers to analyze the gas comp composition of the upper atmosphere, sodium payloads to find out the wind condition, its directions and velocities. We also had inosorphic payloads to explore the different layers of the atmosphere. He not only had to interact with the scientists from TIR, National Physical Laboratory that is NPL and a Physical Research Laboratory RPL but also with payload scientists from USA, USSR, France, Germany and Japan. He often read Kali Gibran's and always find his full words of wisdom. Break, baked without love is a bitter bread that feeds up half a man hunger. Those who cannot work with their hearts achieves but a hollow, half-hearted success that breathes brightness all around. If you are a writer who would secretly prefer to be a lawyer or a doctor, your written words will feed but half the hunger of your readers. If you are a teacher who would rather be a businessman, your instructions will meet but half the need of for the knowledge of your students. If you are a scientist who hates the science, your performance will satisfy but half the needs of your missions, the personal unhappiness and the failures to achieve results that comes from the being a round peg in a square hole is not. But any means new. But there is an expectation to this like Professor Oda and Sudhakar who brings to their work a personal tough of magic based upon the individual characters, personalities, inner motivations and perhaps the dream crystallized within their hearts. They become so emotionally involved in the work that any dilution of the success of their efforts fill them with the grief. Professor Oda was an X-ray payload scientist from the Institution of Space and Aeronautical Science, ISAS, Japan. He remember him as a diminutive man with a towering personality and eyes that radiates intelligence. His dedication to his work was exemplary. He was he would bring X-ray payloads from ISAS, which along with the X-ray payloads made by Professor U. R. Rao, would be engineered by the team to fit into a nose cone of Rohini rocket. At the altitude of 150 kilometers, the nose cone would be separated by explosions of pyro triggered by an electrical timer. With this, the X-ray sensors would be exposed to the space for collecting the required information about the emissions from stars. Together, the Professor Oda and Professor Rao were a unique blend of the intelligence and dedication which one rarely sees one day when 
he was working on the integration for the professor oda payloads with his timer devices he insisted on using the timers he brought down from the japan to him they look flimsy but professor oda stuck to his stand that the indian's timer be replaced by the japanese one he yielded to his suggestions and replaced the timers the rocket took off elegantly and attracted the indicated altitude but the telemetry signals reported the mission failure on account of a timer malfunctioning professor oda was so upset that tears welled up in his eyes he was stunned by the emotional intensity of professor oda responses he had clearly put his heart and soul into his work sudhakar was my colleague in the payload preparation laboratory as a part of the pre launch schedule we were filling and remotely pressing the hazardous sodium and thermite mix as usual it was hot and a humidity day at tumba after the six such operations sudhakar and he went into a payload room to confirm the proper filling of the mix suddenly a drop of a sweat from his forehead fell on the sodium and before we knew what was happening there was a violent explosion which shook the room for a few paralyzed second i did not know what to do the fire was spreading and the water would not extinguish the sodium fire trapped into the inferno sudhakar however did not lose his presence of mind he broke the glass window with his brand's hand and literally threw me out to safety before jumping out himself i touched sudhakar's bleeding hand in a gratitude he was smiling through his pain sudhakar spent many weeks in the hospital recuperating from the severe burns he had received thank you